All right, guys, we're having we're having a little bit of trouble. We're trying to settle something. Neither one of us can come up with a, a uh, what would you say, um, reasonable bet. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Paul and I are betting on whether or not the Buffalo Bills will select a receiver in the first two rounds. All right, guys, so here's the deal. Okay. If, the, if the Bills select a wide receiver in the first two rounds, Mario will lose this bet. Okay. What do you think the conditions of the bet? What what should, oh. what's, the, what's the back end of the bet? I think we throw it to the comments section. What do you guys think would be an applicable punishment? Paul states his case, I state mine. Here it is. If you want to see two guys eating in a car, click that subscribe button. So if the if there's a, damn it, I started a segment with so. So if there was anything that showed us that the Bills were looking at a position other than wide receiver, it was going after Antonio Brown in the draft, right? You go after Antonio Brown, you eliminate wide receiver as a pick. So that tells me the Bills aren't in love with anybody at the position in the top ten. That's what or, that tells me. You can well, throw teams off your scent. Perhaps. But the fact is now that Antonio Brown is not coming to Buffalo, wide receiver could be right back on top. And I don't love any of the wide receivers, but I think there's some theory behind this. And I don't I don't think you're gonna like it. Who got to him? Which one of you did it? All right, so bestow <laughs> upon me your change of heart. All right. We yeah, you did a 360. No, wait. <laughs> That's again, a lot of math. I'm not this is not I'm not I'm not posturing for any one player. I'm just purely talking about the theory behind this, whoa, whoa, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just so I can get ready for this. Yeah. Are you telling me Are you telling me that you're now considering a wide out in the first two rounds of the draft? Yeah, hey, I'm talking a wide out in the top in the first round. Yeah. I'm but again, <laughs> We often talk about how you want the team, you want players to mature together, right? Yes. So you okay. had, um, what's a good example? Um, you had... Um, Marino and the Marx Brothers. You had okay. Reed and Kelly. Reed, Reed, Reed and Kelly. Oh, yeah, Reed and Kelly. Uh, Montana and Rice. They okay. came in about the same time. No, Pretty similar, they did. didn't they? It's like six years apart. Are you serious? He won two Super Bowls before Rice got there. Oh, that's right, he did. Okay, fix that. Okay, anyway. We obviously had the last great wide receiver duo in Buffalo, J.P. Lossman and Lee Evans. That was the last quarterback wide receiver duo that matured together. So truth be told, that's the last one. If this... That was the last one. If that you can't count Fitzpatrick because he was he was a grizzled vet by the time he got here. If this video gets 100 likes, I'm throwing you out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> the fact still remains that that's like, if you're looking at the scope of what has happened in Buffalo, that's really... Like a young, a young quarterback and a young wide receiver. That's yes. the last time you yeah. really saw. Where they attempted to try to get right. that development. Okay, all right, right. go ahead. I so. mean, I suppose. So drafting a wide out in the Robert next draft. Woods and EJ Manuel. They tried. And I Sammy. suppose and Sammy. I said, okay, all right, I'll, I'll give that. Okay. I'll give that. All right. So the last couple of swings at this hasn't gone so well. No. But that's really what most organizations want to do is they want your young quarterback and a and a young receiver to grow together. I don't think they intended Foster to be that guy. They got Foster because he was familiar with Dable's offense. He was an undrafted free agent. He cost you basically nothing. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So Foster was just a, let's throw up the wall and see if this kid can make the roster. And he did. And he's impressed a lot of people. But you could still go out and get that wide receiver to develop and go with your quarterback. Right? And a lot of times you talk about wide receivers take a long time to develop. Yeah, wide receivers do take a long time to develop because the game changes for them. Right? Mm -hmm. It's not about just running their route. It's about running their route better than the quarterback who knows what their route is. Right? It's about reading the coverages, not only at the first level, but at the second and third level, and being able to adjust your route and have and share the share the brain with the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So the quarterback knows how you're going to adjust that route. That's a lot goes into becoming an, an NFL wide receiver that they just don't do at the college level. In, indeed. Now, you put a rookie receiver into Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers and his offense, is he more likely to be successful yes. learning those things? Yes. Right. Because if he doesn't, he's going to be Jeff Janis and sit on the sideline. Exactly. He's not going to get the opportunities, mm -hmm. right? 
However, when you have a quarterback like Josh Allen who is learning those things, so you're saying you they make want, mistakes together, right? Wouldn't okay. you want those guys to learn together? Because you're not going to hold the receiver to a higher standard than you're holding Josh Allen. No, but you said before that you want a veteran wideout to hold Allen accountable because no one is. Agreed, but I still think that's going to happen. So the Bills, I think, are still going to go out and sign a veteran who's going to try and hold the, a room accountable for that stuff. Or the other the other option could have been they've already done that with Ken Dorsey. He's going to hold Allen accountable. That's actually not a bad point. Side. So you can, you can draft and get all these young wide receivers in here, but the one guy that's going to hold him accountable is Dorsey because he can see the, through the eyes of the quarterback. That's fascinating. I didn't I didn't take that perspective on it, but I like, I like where you're going with that. Yes. So the Bills are absolutely still in play for a wide receiver. Brown's not coming. Yep. So the Bills are absolutely still in play for a wideout. And again, you take a look at how long it takes for wide receivers to develop. I think they'd be more successful going with a, a younger quarterback than going with a grizzled vet who's going to look and say, just did the route wrong, and then not look at them for the next 14 snaps. You know? <laughs> like that's, but that's the things that NFL quarterbacks get frustrated with. They want their receivers to do their job. They don't want to have to wait for their receiver to learn to do their job. They don't, they don't want that. Okay. They wanted the guy so to just get it. This is your reasoning that they, they may draft another young wideout prior to the fourth round. Right. You're saying. So yeah. for, I'll, I'll open it up. First three yeah. rounds, you think they're going to take a wideout? I, think, I really think wideout is very much in play. I mean, there are a lot of options that aren't DK Metcalf out there. Yeah, absolutely. Who, who have the hips of, he has the hips of a 70-year-old. There's a lot of receivers in this draft that I really, really like. Nah. But, again, the pressure that's put on a wide receiver is to learn all these things that they're required to learn. Yeah. And you if you have a rookie quarterback, they don't really know what you need to know. They don't really know what you need to do yet. They're yeah. still learning in that process. And Allen being a year ahead of them, I think, helps push that process along a little bit faster, right? Yeah. Because the rookie wideout's going to come in and, and Allen's going to say, okay, these are the first three things that I learned, so these are the first three things you need to learn. Mm -hmm. And now, okay, you're up to speed. All right, let's, let's go on together. I am not on board. Well, I'm not on board with your first three I've, picks. I've got one of them being wide out. I've got one more little caveat to throw in because I knew you'd disagree with me. So I got one more card to put on the table and slide across before. There's one more. Let me just put it to you this way. Ready? We're playing Texas Hold'em. I got one more card on the river. Are you ready for the last Speak, card? Really quick. Speaking of Texas Hold'em, did you see the tweet I put out? I did. Yeah. I okay. thought it was perfect. I was trying to explain I great how everyone was doing. Now listen, <clears throat> from the Super Bowl to the Combine, that's the flop. You play Texas Hold'em. That's the flop. Because all these GMs and coaches and everything that's going on, all this news you hear, all that stuff is just smokescreen until the draft. Doesn't matter. Right? None right? Of it, none so of it the Combine to free agency is going to be the turn. The river, which tells you all the cards, is free agency to the draft. Yeah. Until something happens on April 24th, I don't believe anything that goes on. Right. Well, that's why I'm saying that my okay, point so here is, a, is, is the river. Right? Here's your river. This is, right. this is the river. All right. Brian Dable is installing primarily air raid schemes into the offense this season to help Josh Allen start to mature. So, oftentimes we look at wide receivers and we say pro style spread, right? And the wide mm -hmm. receivers that come from spread systems are often devalued a little more because they longer to develop. They take longer to develop. Mm -hmm. Well, when your OC says, no, we're going to run primarily a lot of spread concepts, that immediately takes what you're going to do and boosts the value of those spread wide receivers because you can install them into your system faster than other organizations can, especially if you have a rookie or a second year quarterback who understands those concepts already. So you're looking at taking a wide receiver and you're going to drop them into a system that you know they're going to be successful in because it's not a whole new language to them. They're not going to be required to run these read routes and run these adjustments day one. Like that's what you saw. That's why the Bills got so successful as the season went on. It wasn't that Allen was getting better. It's Dable cut a lot of the nonsense out of the playbook and said, all right, let's run what's going to work. We got all of these wide receivers who've been here for four weeks. So let's run stuff that they know. All right, that's fine. And we're guess where we are? That's where we are at the start of next year. So you can take a look at these rookie wide receivers. And again, the first, second round picks, they're immediately going to impact your offense because you're running concepts that they're already familiar with. They're built to be successful. So that's why, again, I think the Bills are going to invest a high pick and wide receiver now because you're installing that capital in future years. Because you pick that receiver right now, two, three years down the road, as the offense 
starts to mature as Allen matures, that wide receiver is going to mature with him. And you're going to have two wide receivers or three wide receivers that do it. You're going to have McKenzie, you're going to have Foster, and you're going to have whoever they draft in the first, first or second round. So that was my last play to try and convince you. All right. You're a hypocrite. What do you mean I'm a hypocrite? Primarily, in spread systems, Google Big 12. How many times do they throw the ball? I know. How many I times know. they throw the ball? I know. Like a hundred. Like a hundred. Yes. <laughs> the Bills aren't going to throw the ball a hundred times. I wish I had the time, because I don't, <laughs> to go through all the episodes you said. They're not going to throw 40 times a game. They're, they're not, not going to throw. They're, they're not going to throw, throw 40 times But they're going to install an offense that throws 40 times a game. Why didn't Brown come here then if they were going to throw 40 times a I'm game? Say, I'm saying... I'm he's saying, not going to get the volume. I'm saying in the passing concepts, they're going to be oh, spread. So you said the scheme is going to change. So they're going to have some schemes where that the receivers that come from spread offenses won't have to learn as much. However, they're still going to run a pro-style offense. Dable runs a pro-style. Not well. Okay. That's like, that's like me drafting a running back ninth overall because I plan on running the Wildcat a few times. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. You, you do make a valid point. If he's installing more air raid concepts to spread wide receivers, you're 100% right. They're going to understand those co concepts a little better. Here's my point going on what happened last year. Last year when you when you started the season, okay, you had Zay Jones, you had Calvin Benjamin. Uh, Andre Holmes. You had Andre Holmes. Who else? And Foster was up and down. No, no, I mean, you, but, but I'm just saying, to start, before you even played a game, you said, and we both talked about this all the time, they didn't address the wide receiver position. No. They didn't address it. No. They were taking big cat, they were taking a big, huge dead money bomb, they didn't do any of this, X, Y, and Z, all this other stuff. They got McKenzie. Mm -hmm. Foster matured. Mm -hmm. Zay started to come into his own a little bit. All right, so there's three guys right there. Mm -hmm. What haven't they addressed? You got rid of Benjamin, which helped you out. You got rid of Clay. Now you got to fill that spot. So those three guys, Zay coming a little bit into his own, uh, McKenzie and, and Foster, they have addressed partially the wide receiver position without drafting two out of those three. Right. Yep. So they could still address the position. You even said it, I, I think, maybe like last week or two weeks ago. You could pick a wide receiver off of Dable's scrap heap that's uh -huh. a senior this year that may not get drafted because that's yeah. what Foster was. Yeah. Okay. Well, Alabama's just He's right running. with the best athletes in the country. I mean, that's what it. That's what it is. They get. And the I best don't think anybody will argue that point. No. And the fact is, a guy who probably is like third or fourth string mm -hmm. wideout on Alabama would probably be a starter at Directional University. Yeah. You, God, you love Directional point University. Point being is that I don't think they would invest a high draft pick in something like like the Whaley effect. So you think that, as much as think as much as everyone are, hates Whaley here, I understand that. Yeah. Whaley knew how to scout linebackers. Mm -hmm. You can't take that away right. from him. Yeah. Quarterbacks, wide receivers, no way he couldn't. He didn't know what they were. But <laughs> linebackers, he could scout and he could find a guy in the third, fourth round and do all that stuff. I think this coaching staff can find wideouts and a use for them without you investing a high draft pick in. Hmm. I think they can. I'm, I'm excited to see how this plays out uh -huh. because when we're covering the draft, yeah, at I know. I'm Batavia, gonna on my at, face. at 34 rush at Batavia Downs, you know live at the draft. So if you want to join us, you know what's gonna be fun. Come out, we'll be there. We're covering the draft live at 34 rush Batavia Downs. Yes. Um, you want to come hang out with us? Come hang out with us. We're part of a panel. We'll be there round oh, one, and we'll be there day one, day two. It's so much fun. Um, but if the Bills pull the trigger on a wide receiver. Even if they trade down, doesn't matter. If the Bills pull a wide receiver, we we have to, we have to squelch it back here. First two if the Bills draft you know a wide what's receiver, gonna happen? First you know what it's, it's, it's gonna back. be a push. It's gonna be a push because they're not gonna draft one with their first pick. They're not gonna draft one with their second pick. They're gonna trade back into the second round ah. and draft them. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen.